I just know you're going to love the guests that we have on in this episode, so don't go away. Welcome to the interview of Dr. Rick Wodge. Have on our dear friend, Margie Pezder. It's Margie, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. And how are you, Rick? I'm doing really good. It's been a very busy week, but a very good week. I'm uh, not happy about hearing the news these days, but it no. seems like every day is another uh, saga in, in the is. large scheme of things. Uh, exactly. What's going on with you? Let's hear it. Well, there's so much going on I want to talk about. But first of all, I want to clear up something I said uh, a couple interviews ago. Okay. And we, you and I were talking, and I was so excited because I had been reading Radish's commentary on First and Second Samuels. Okay. From this book. I recall. Okay. And it said that King Saul had reigned for two years. Well, you and I talked about that, and we were both like, really? All that stuff happened in two years? And then I was reading in Acts, uh, I think it's 13, where uh, he was given 40 years credit in Acts 13. I thought, wait a minute. So I went back and I did some serious research. I did the Jewish New Testament commentary and Josephus because I thought, I really want to get this straight because I'm not into wishing to mislead anybody. So the point is, nobody knows. That's the deal. So, um, according as I said, the Jewish testament, um, the Jewish commentary, he was reigned for two years. Well, then when I was reading in Josephus, it said he reigned for two years after Samuel died. So he reigned eighteen years with Samuel, kind of like a co co presidency, I guess, or what are you going to call co monarchy. And then after Samuel died, he reigned for two more years. I thought, well, okay, that's 20 years. That's more logical, considering that he had, um, David was a child when he slew Goliath. And then that David and Jonathan became a, adult friends. And David okay. married Michal. So I thought, oh, that makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And then so I went on and I was looking and looking and looking. And I thought the truth is nobody really knows for sure. David reigned 40 years. 40 is a biblical number, uh, so it's a possibility that Saul reigned even longer than the 20 years. I don't know. It was a long time, and a lot of history happened in that time. Unfortunately, there was no um, court reporter there to write down the notes, and so we have to go. So I guess choose a time, and that's how long he reigned. But I'm going to say it was at least, at least 20 years and maybe longer. So God bless you, Saul. Yes. You ran long enough. You messed it up. David cleaned it up. So. Okay. Good job. And I think that also teaches us a, a lesson that, uh, and you're really good at this anyways. You always check multiple sources. But when right. we think about Rashi, we think, you know, Rashi's going to have a handle on this. He's from the culture. He's a rabbi. He's in. But not everybody has all the information. And even with the ancients, they don't necessarily have all the information. I just right. remember, because I came up with the, with the number 13, I, I thought it was 14. Yeah, David 14. came. Yeah, I think he was running for 14 years. Yeah. But I was thinking back now, I wrote a series on the Psalms from the original Hebrew, and I gave a background for David, and that's where I had that number from. But I got to tell you, Margie, I can't remember now without going through all my notes right. of where I came up with the 14 years. I know. So. Anyways, good lesson. Thanks for clarifying. What is going on in the news? Okay, well, I will always clarify if I find out I screwed up. So yes. That's that. Now, as to the news, it's kind of like buckle up because so much is going on in Israel, in the Middle East, and it's just colossal what all is happening. So I'm going to read some notes because I can't keep up with it all just, you know, in my head. So Russia, Iran, and Turkey. Oh, the three bad boys. Russia, you know, is Putin. Iran is the crazy dude. And Turkey is Erdogan, who is just evil in plain clothes. He's, he's just, I used to think 
Turkey was such a good country, and Lebanon as well. But Turkey, when Erdogan came in, he is an absolute Islamist, and he is he is hell bent. Excuse the French, if that's French, on destroying Israel. Now, all of these guys want to overdo Israel. Russia has played nice over the last what twenty years or something like that, to the degree that Russia can play nice. But now Russia is fed up. What Russia is fed up about is the fact that they have been uh, supporting Hezbollah and Iran and been sending uh, RPGs, which are what the, the missiles and uh, other guided missiles to Syria. Syria, as you well know, is the next door neighbor of, of Israel and really wants to destroy Israel. You know, yes. the Golan Heights in Syria match them that they meet like Texas and Oklahoma. So anyhow, uh, Assad, the president of Syria, wants to destroy Israel. So he's allowing all these missiles to come in from, from Russia and Iran, which are going to all go over on Israel. Israel says, oh, no, 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 no. This is our backyard, and we're keeping it clean. So Israel goes in and bombs all these storage places where they have these rockets, all right, and they've been doing it for quite a while, but we don't hear anything about that. Once in a great while, we'll hear something, mm -hmm. but according to what I'm finding out, they've, they've done like 100 sorties into, into Syria, taking out these warehouses. Now, can you imagine, had they not have done that, and just what, a month ago, Israel was at war, in May, Israel was at war with in Gaza, so now we have this thing going on on the other border. So now... Russia says, we're tired of this. We're tired of Israel being the big guy, and we want to take them down. So now they have completely openly aligned with Iran, Turkey, and, and Russia, all three of them. Are you now, kidding? Right out of the book of Ezekiel. Yes, right it is. Out, right there. So, and so, so to what extent? Like providing them with money, providing them with weapons, providing them with with military? To yes, what degree? all of it. All of no. it. I did not know that Russia already has troops in Syria. I didn't know that. I didn't know it either. It already has troops. I guess it's a small uh, amount of troops. I don't know. I don't know how many they are. I don't know if anybody knows for sure. I mean, but they already have troops stationed in Syria. So they're saying, well, you're going to hurt our guys if you keep bombing. Well, get your guys out. Take them home. You know, who cares? So anyhow, now, as of Friday, uh, sorry, as of Thursday of this week, on August the 5th, the leadership of Iran changes. Guess who's coming in as their new president? Oh, you're going to know his name. Ibrahim Raisi. Raisi. The, the butcher of Tehran. This guy is so bad, he reeks. You can smell him clear over here. He is so bad. He he is into annihilating people. I think it's something I read. He killed like 5,000 dissidents in Iran. I mean, that's your own people. And if you're going to kill your own people just because they disagree right. with you. What would you do to those that are foreigners? Yes. And so they had this presidential election. But it's, you know, what's your choice when there's only one person on the ballot? I don't, I didn't mm. see their ballot. I don't know. Wouldn't mm. know anyway because I don't read Persian. But. The point being is there is something amiss in Denmark, except it's Iran. And, and with all of this, you see these guys coming down and you kind of wonder what's up next. So now you have Turkey, who hates Israel. You have Iran, who hates Israel. Russia, who's decided to hate Israel. And they've all come together and they're on the borders of, of Israel. Now, Turkey is, is a country north. Of Israel. The Lebanon is in between. Lebanon has always been relatively friendly to, to Israel, a lot, largely a Christian nation. However, in the last, say, 10, 12 years, something like that, Hezbollah has taken over the southern portion of Lebanon. And last time we talked, we talked about the caves that Hezbollah had built coming into Israel. And now we see where its bullet is well stationed on the southern part of Lebanon. So basically, Israel has been surrounded by almost a ring of fire. Jordan on the east is quietly 
shaking in their boots because they don't know what to do. Jordan would like to be friendly yeah. with Israel. Yeah. However, however, they have all these big guys mm -hmm. aiming their rockets at them if they mess up. And then you have Saudi Arabia has been attacked a number of times by Iran. Did you know that? I did not. They've been with drones, you know, unmanned drones flying into Saudi. And I kept thinking, well, what's the deal there? Well, you know, the difference is in Saudi is the home of Islam, but Saudi is Wahhabi. Iran is Sunni or Shia. And I think it's a mixture of the two. I don't really understand all this, you know. But Saudi and Iran, our guests, are natural enemies because this, I guess, it's like the Pentecostals and the Methodists. I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, it's, I don't know how else to describe like it. Steroids, I really, though. <laughs> Yeah. With rockets. With, yeah, with rockets. <laughs> but Saudi, as much as I do not care for Saudi, and I don't because I have not forgotten the 19 guys that flew into our buildings, you know, many of whom right. were from Saudi. Yes. Uh, but, but the point being is the whole Middle East is rumbling, 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 like big time. And then on last Thursday, not even a week ago, guess what Iran did? They bombed with an unmanned um, drone, an Israeli ship at, at the at the as it was coming into the Gulf of Oman. This Israeli ship, it's a little confusing. And I'll be the first to tell you, I know nothing about maritime law, but the ship was actually owned by Ch Japan, leased to an Israeli businessman who does business as Zodiac something Zodiac something. And he, it's an, it was an oil tanker. So obviously it had gone from, um, I believe, Tunisia and it was headed back to Oman. It was empty. Thank God it was empty. Mm -hmm. When they bombed it with this manned drone, they killed, it killed two people. A guy from, um, from one guy from, Brit from Britain and the other one from, um, wasn't Russia, but near there. Anyhow, they're both angry, uh, and there's, they have now, even the United States has come out and said, well, don't, you don't have the right to do that, and you can't do that, and so uh, what they're doing, I'm looking, Romania, Romania and British citizens. The, Rom the Romanian citizen was the captain of the ship. He was killed, and the British citizen was a worker on the ship, and he is dead. So now the United States and the United Kingdom have both said, uh-uh. Too many sabers rattling. You got to stop it. And so they have, get this, they've given the green light to Israel to do what Israel declares necessary to do. Naftali Bennett has come out and said, we will respond in our, in our choice of time and location, but we will respond. Now, we don't know what that response is going to be. We don't know in what form. Um, I know what I'd like to see happen, but mm -hmm. that's me. Something but, about a parking lot, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, a level. They need a good parking lot out there. Yeah, for the camels. So uh, the whole point is everything is rattling, 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 rattling. And and I've been saying for months now, it, ever since the COVID thing, well, actually even before then, but things are lining up, lining up, lining up, and it's not like connecting the dots. Well, every now and then you get a dot that's out of line, but then you see it go slowly coming back into alignment with everything else. And, you know, two weeks ago, Russia and Iran and um, uh, Turkey had not come out and openly stated we're together on this. You know, it just wasn't there. Now, all of a sudden it's there. And so it's it's really a dangerous time in many ways to um, considering everything that's going on in Israel. And yet it's also an exciting time. It's exciting because we see prophecy being carried out. We see uh, all this alignment happening and it's kind of like, what's going to happen next? I don't know. Um, I, I, you know, one of the things that strikes me is the timing on all this with our current U.S. administration. And so yeah. it seems to me that when President Trump was in office, 
which in my opinion, he should be in office right now. He's the rightful yeah. president. That's what I'm saying. I, agree. Uh, I didn't go out and count the votes, but I mean, it just makes sense to me because yeah. who we have right now in the White House to me is not a president. He's not acting presidential. He doesn't speak presidential. He doesn't make decisions that are helping the U.S. Oh, did I say all that out loud? I thought that was my inside voice. Uh, <laughs> but it seems to me that uh, they're taking advantage of a very weak uh, U.S. administration right now. Very weak. I think so. And, and the world knows we're weak. So it's what you said. We have Trump is out now. Uh, um, Bibby is out. And so we don't know yet for sure how strong Naftali Bennett's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, I always thought he was really a great guy and very strong. However, the coalition he put together to form his government kind of stinks. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's an Arab MK, uh, uh, whole Arab party. A lot of people don't realize that Arabs do get to vote in Israel. Israeli right. Arabs get to vote. And so they voted in this, this party, which I think is five members, I believe. And they have a long, a heavy hand on Naftali Bennett because they can bring the government down just like that. Because the, um, the amount of people he has in his government is, is so thin as far as the, I don't even know how you say it. There's, it's totally different from our government. It's more like the British Parliament. Mm. And if the party doesn't like their government, they can pull out and say, well, we're going to take our toys and go home. And that brings the whole government down. And then you're back into re-elections. This is why they've this. had so many elections. Yes, it's chaos. I mean, they need to throw out that whole form of government. And you know what set they up need? I'll tell you what they need. I, I've got the answer to this. They need the Messiah to come and reign. Amen. 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 I agree that. With that. that would solve all yeah. these problems. Solve all of our problems, too. Yeah, I, think so. I think so. <laughs> I don't see the Messiah coming back and wearing a mask. I'm just saying. No, I think he's going to have a sword and he'll probably rip yeah. off the mask. Yeah, I, <laughs> so it, He has the ultimate vaccination for every human being. Every absolutely, human being. he yes. is. And the thing is, with all this insanity going on, and then then we're running around saying, oh, put on the mask, put on the mask. And I heard this morning, oh, well, the cloth masks aren't good enough. I tell you, I have a mask. I should show it to you. Um, but the cloth masks aren't good enough. Now they want you to wear this. Was it N N95? Is that what it's called? Yeah. And th now, and this morning I heard, well, even that wasn't any good unless you had a respirator with it. And I thought, oh, yeah, I can just see it. something out of a science fiction movie, walking around the mask with those stupid little things on it, you know. My son, who is, a, who is a nurse, serious nurse, says, don't wear the mask. It's not going to do any good, Mom. It's going to cut down your breathing. That's enough right. issue anyway. It's like a screen door in a submarine is what I've been told. <laughs> right? That's a very that's, good analogy. That's everything in. Yeah. Everything in. So, and, and you know, you look, uh, even even in um, in Britain, there, everything is chaos there, and in France, mm -hmm. how the people are demonstrating against this uh, vaccine passport. Australia yeah. too. Vaccine passport, vaccine passport. Mm -hmm. People are angry. Yes. You have to be tested to go into a shop or anything, or to a, to a restaurant. You have to show. You have, and the people are saying no. This is what the world needs to do. The people need to rise up. Marty, now, they're even saying this in New York right now. Yes. In New York, they're talking about a vaccine passport where if you don't show your, you know, that you've been vaccinated, you can't get into stores. Yeah. And, and I think it was the governor or the mayor or both are pushing for this. And oh, you yes. know, talk about a way to kill the economy. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead and shut down all the shops again for another year. Boy, that's going to be great for the middle class. What about all the people? Now, you got yeah. me started here. Okay. Okay, well, so no. what about all the the moratoriums, right, on uh, on rent and uh, mortgages? And so th they're estimating 15 million Americans may be displaced. No, I'm sorry, 15 million households may be displaced through what's going on right now because people haven't been able to pay rent. They haven't been able to pay their mortgage payments. They're behind a couple of months. A lot of Americans are. Mm -hmm. What is going to happen to these folks? And then when you're talking about all the trillions of dollars, the, have you seen the debt ceiling of where we're at oh. right now? It is oh, insane. Yeah. And so if we're not able to even pay the interest on the debt, what is that going to do to the economy? Now, look, I sound like I'm all alarmed about this. No, I'm, I'm very angry about this because it well. didn't have to be this way. But you know what? I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid because 
As you said at the beginning of this interview, this is God's timeline. God has got everything organized with the Middle East as well as America, Israel's faithful partner. If we're pulled out of the way, Israel must trust in God. Absolutely. And and I think you have, in Israel, it's just like here, you have those who do trust, you know, and some of my dearest friends are, are Orthodox Jews. I even have a family that are ultra-Orthodox, and their faith in God is amazing. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. But then you also have so many secular, like you talk about Tel Aviv, uh, or, or parts of Haifa are even very secular. And so you, you you look at this whole thing, just like here, you know, you hear you have the heartland of America, you know, and, and we all believe we all have a faith. We all trust God. I, I'm saying all. Yeah, yeah, I'm generally speaking, biggest, yes. Yeah. But then either coast, it's like where well, they're rocking, you know, they're like crazy people. So, so here in Oklahoma today, the sun is out, it's full sun. And yet we are hazy because of the smoke coming in and out of California, oh. caught up in air currents and down here. So I'm having a little allergy issue. Mm-hmm. But but we in the heartland are experiencing the devastation of California mm-hmm. from the smoke coming in. Now, I mean, it's, it's no big deal for me because it's just an allergy issue. God bless those poor people in California. Yes. That are suffering, but they have voted in idiots yes. that are running running their state. Yes. So you talk about the Northeast, Cuomo, oh my gosh, he needs to go away, long, long away. He doesn't care what happens to his state because the Democrats are in power and they're just going to write checks and checks and checks to back him up economically. So what does it matter if he closes down? And so you're talking about people becoming homeless yes. because of the eviction thing. Yeah. I'm on the other side of that fence. David and I owned a bunch of apartments in Vermont. Now, let me tell you, the bank owned us. Mm-hmm. And so if, if our tenants didn't pay right. their rent, then we had to shuffle to make things happen. Right. We could not have survived financially this long without people paying their rent. And let right. me tell you. They know. They can say, well, I'm off work and I don't have the money and you can't kick me out. And so my heart, I mean, I'm sorry for those people that are jobless. But having been on the other side of the fence, I understand what it's like to make those payments at the bank. And the bank is usually without mercy on that. And Margie, here in Texas, almost every single business has a sign that says, help Help wanted. wanted. It is insane. I've never seen it like this. Here as well. It's everywhere. And I just think, you know, I think if you're breathing, they'll hire you. It's just, I don't, I, now Oklahoma did cut off this extra $300 a week or whatever it was that they, that the unemployed were getting, but we still see the help wanted signs everywhere. Oklahoma cut that off, I think in June, I believe the end of June, but we still see those signs. I don't quite understand what's going on with all that. I don't understand why there's still so many signs out. We've got restaurants that won't open up for breakfast because they don't have enough staff to staff that schedule. Right. Uh, it, right. It's it's really crazy. I mean, this is this is the workers' opportunity. If you want to work, there are plenty of places you can get a good job, and they're even raising the amount of what they'll pay because they're so desperate to try to keep the businesses open. Yeah. Well, and then, then I heard last night on the news, there's a, there is a famous chef, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, in New York, that he's having so much trouble getting a staff for his, his large, very large, very famous restaurant. And he's having so much trouble getting staff that now he's providing college tuition for a staff. Wow. If you, come to work, you come to work for him and you work for, I don't know, six, three months, six months, whatever it was, I wasn't listening that carefully, mm. then he will give you tuition. Uh, a degree of tuition to Johnson and Wales Culinary School, which is wow. my daughter went there. Very expensive culinary school. And there was another school that he was giving tuition to. And I thought, wow, what an opportunity. But just think what that's costing him. Wow. Now, he has to filter that down. You cannot right. You cannot pay someone $15 an hour. You cannot give someone a college tuition like that. With that, coming back and saying to you and I as customers, right. you like my place? Well, here's $20 added to your bill yes. because I have to pay these people. Right. And it seems like 
the left side of the fence never ever thinks it completely through. Yes. And like what we, we didn't bring up was taxation. So, all so you know, that is absolutely coming. All the experts are saying that taxation is coming in a major way. Now, I don't know what the price of gas is there, but we're seeing products go up like crazy in the, in the grocery stores at the pump. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, everything's going up in price. Yeah. Uh, most people are not earning more money. Uh, and yet, uh, and, and now we're having a kind of a beef crisis. They're talking about a rubber crisis globally because many of the countries that produce the main bulk of the rubber for rubber products, which is almost everything has a rubber product in it uh, around the world, they have gone through monsoons. They've gone through weather problems. They've gone through COVID-19. They've gone through all these problems. So there's a lot of things coming. And, and I guess my point in this Margie, is that people have got to look at God. They've got to focus on God. They've got to focus on their relationship, getting strong in their faith, and not allow the fear to consume them. Absolutely. My sister was reading to me an excerpt last night from an article that Corey Ten Boom had written. And she was talking about when she and her sister were imprisoned in, in the concentration camp, uh, there were the two bright lights in this barracks of people just under horrible conditions. Mm -hmm. And she said, the one thing that we had was we had memorized scripture. Now I will tell you, I am very bad about memorizing scripture. I read it, I read it, I read it, but I don't have a good memory for it. But I'm thinking, Lord, please give me a memory to, to memorize this, right. you know, um, because I think it's going to be the one thing we have. And we've talked before when Israel went up yes. against all those chariots and those iron chariots and all they had was, uh, uh, bows and arrows and slingshots, but they had God and they took them down. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need. We've got to have God. Uh, Margie, we have one minute left. Literally give us your website and uh, we're going to have to talk again over a lot more <laughs> stuff going on today. Go ahead. MargiePezDirts.com. You can even get there from MargiePez.com. And I invite people to come to my website. Uh, my books are on there. You, if you want to get them from the website, you, they, it goes directly to Amazon. If you want to get them from me with signatures, you have to email me and tell me you want them. Oh, time's up. <laughs> well, it's not only the time left on the program, but the time left on this planet. We're waiting for <laughs> Messiah to come back. Man, and please, uh, friends, listen, if there was ever a time to say Maranatha, Lord, Lord, come quickly, it's now. Uh, thank you for watching the interview. Thank you for being a part of Israel TV Network, where we have people that are informed like Margie Pesdurts. And we would ask you to help sponsor some of these shows uh, and, and look at what Margie's doing with her books and, and help fund her programs by buying those books because you're gonna get more information and accurate information in a world that is sinking in false fake news. Now's the time more than ever to have the real deal, the real news, so that we know what's going on on the planet and we can prepare. And the best way to prepare is through prayer. We'll see you next okay. time. Shalom. Bye.